Welcome to the 70.3 Oceanside Highlights and Breakdown, where every second mattered for the first race of the Ironman Pro Series. There were a lot of men before the race kicked off that were looking confident and relaxed and ready to get the race underway, but some, like Sam Long, looked a little more intense, a little more nervous. Yellow Gaines was one of them. A lot of people had their eyes on him for the win, the short course Olympian athlete. However, if he did want to win, he would have to beat 70 other men, which was a new Ironman record for the most amount of starters in a race. And you could immediately tell as the gun went off because the whitewash that they created, I'm pretty sure you could have surfed it. The athletes were all jostling for position because if you got stuck in the wrong spot with this many athletes around you, there was little hope for your swim. And there were a lot of good swimmers in this deep field who were definitely going to push the pace with the strong bike runners in the back of the field but a lot of people after the race was moved to the harbor weren't sure if they were going to be able to get away with a wetsuit swim as well it really did favor the weaker swimmers on paper however a group of four of magnus manor matcha cecciarelli matthew sharp and mark dubrick broke away from the front and managed to get a decent amount of time before unfortunately they got a little bit off course and they had to be redirected to the right side of the buoy so they lost a bit of time there which was good for those behind the likes of lionel sanders sam long and jackson laundry everybody was wondering where those three would come out lionel had won the race two times before sam long had just come off of a phenomenal performance in miami and Jackson Laundry was the 2022 champion. But we didn't have to wait long because it felt like as soon as the swim had started, it was already over and they'd covered the 1.9 kilometers. And it was Magnus Manor who came out the water first with Matcha, Matthew Sharp, and Mark Dubrick hot on his heels. Just behind them was a second group about 30 to 40 seconds down that included Florian Angert and Hella Gaines, as well as Justin Reale, a great swim biker, and Patrick Langout was in there as well. But then the big surprise, the big headline of the day, was that Lionel Sanders had one of his career best swims, coming out of the water in 22nd place, but more importantly, he was right with Jackson Laundry, and he was a minute ahead of Sam Long. However, it wouldn't be for long because he lost a lot of time in transition, almost 40 seconds, and then he made a mistake early on the bike and had to make a quick U-turn and ended up in the back of the pack that contained Sam Long. So he lost all the time he'd gained in that swim and now had to hold on for dear life as Sam Long pushed the power to try and get back to the front of this race which had grown in size because a few of the athletes, including Yella Gaines, Justin Reale, and Maximilian Spurl, who was having a breakthrough performance, managed to get to the front, so they had a large group working together, but there was no stopping the coming freight train with Jackson Laundry, Sam Long, and Lionel Sanders. Patrick Langout was managing to hold on to them for a while, and he thought he might get a ticket to this front of this race, but all of us knew they were gonna get there quite soon, and probably a lot sooner than any of us would have expected. Now, Yellow Gaines was at the front of this race for a long time at the beginning, pushing the pace, trying to keep those guys away. Later after the race, he did admit to making a few tactical errors during the bike course, and maybe this was one of them. Now, keep in mind, it was freezing at this time of the day, and I'm sure that was some extra incentive to push a little bit more power to stay warm. And sure enough, that group with Sam Long, Lionel Sanders, and Jackson Laundry, just to name a few, attached to the front of the group as the hills in this course started. And that meant it was only going to favor them more. We were just going to have to wait and see whether this front group was going to be able to stay on. And surprisingly, despite Sam moving to the front and pushing the pace, a lot of them were able to hang on and take advantage of the draft benefits of being in a large pack. But we all knew that it was going to eventually break apart as those hills came. And a lot of people were wondering if Joe Skipper had made it into this pack, but unfortunately his swim was just too far back and he never saw the front of this race. And at this point, Lionel did say that Sam was just too strong and he didn't have the legs to take many turns at the front. Jackson Laundry put in quite a bit of work himself, but it really was Sam leading the charge. 
However, he just couldn't lose the group. Lionel was saying he was hanging on for dear life as he knew if Sam got away, that was it. And I just couldn't imagine how much power they were having to push to keep up with him. Lionel was probably grateful for every bit of aerodynamic work he's done over the winter and he also said he did 13 weeks straight of training leading into this race and he literally couldn't do any more. He said he needed this race to come. He had a mental breakdown right at the end of that training block. He was obviously primed for a big effort here and speaking of big efforts, this big hill came and it really splintered the group because some people weren't able to get around and get in a good position. And that's where being at the back of the pack really has a big disadvantage because now if somebody makes a move at the front, it is so hard to react to it. And that's exactly what happened after this steep uphill. When the downhill came, it changed this race for good. As athletes like Mark Dubrick, Yella Gaines, Braden Curry, all fell off the back and it was just five athletes at the front now with Maximilian Spurl behind Sam Long, Lionel Sanders, Jackson Laundry, and impressively Justin Reale who was kicking off only his second full pro year. So these guys were on a roll coming into transition. They knew it was their race to lose at this point. It was set up to be such a fast run perfect temperatures blue skies tons of fans out spectating we all knew this was going to be a memorable one when they came into t2 we just had to see who had the freshest legs who did too much work on the bike but honestly they all looked pretty good coming into transition nobody looked off Lionel Sanders did bang into Maximilian Spurl's bike there and probably made a few of you like me worried that he had done something to himself but thankfully it was immediately clear that he was fine sam long took off like a bullet like he always does out of transition but lionel looked like he had the freshest legs and we would soon see him at the front with sam but yellow Gaines, who had been caught in no man's land on the bike came into transition two minutes 45 seconds down mark dubrick was four minutes and 15 seconds down coming into transition so the end of that bike ride really made all the difference and even though mark and yellow are two of the best runners in the sport it was just too much for them to overcome with the likes of Lionel and Sam and Jackson Laundry up front. And at first it looked like it was just gonna be Sam and Lionel duking it out like we've seen them do so many times before. But Jackson Laundry was looking to be a part of this run battle and he split the two for quite a while. Now behind them, Braden Curry was one of the fastest movers. Yellow Gaines and Mark were running well, but they just weren't gaining any time. So it was gonna be between these three for the win. But Lionel's one advantage of the three of them was that he has raced here a lot of times. And he's run anywhere from a 114 half marathon all the way down to a 108.28 in 2022. But others on course who didn't have as much experience and perhaps pushed too hard outside of their comfort zone on the bike or struggling but Lionel was not one of them he clearly raced a smart race on the bike and was probably glad he didn't take many turns at the front Lionel's gap continued to grow but it was growing ever so slowly those two were within striking distance for most of the run however Lionel decided at about mile seven and a half to really put the hammer down and he said he wanted to mentally break Sam and have him stop trying. And sure enough, when Lionel put the hammer down, that gap grew quite a bit and there was gonna be no catching him. Lionel was gonna bring home his third Oceanside 70.3 title and I'll let you enjoy it from here on out. Lionel finished off the day with a 110.40 half marathon. Sam Long ran a 112.02 and Jackson Laundry a 112.37. 
What an incredible race. Lionel picks up the first Pro Series win and it will be top of those leaderboards. Next up for him, he is racing St. George and then also putting in a big block for Ironman Lake Placid as he gets ready to go to Kona and try and become world champion. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you in the women's race.